So recently I had a post go kind of viral on Instagram talking all about the three tips that I would give new couples who want their relationship to last. I have a little bit of experience Seven in bathrooms. this. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. I have a little bit of experience in this, seeing that I have a master's in marriage and family therapy. And me and this guy next to me have been together for 15 years and married for nine. It has not been easy, but we have made it work. We are out and about running some errands without the kids today. And we wanted to kind of take you guys along with us and spend some time talking about the three tips we would give couples who want to make their relationships last and to, you know, make it work. And The first tip that I would give couples who want their relationship to last, number one, two wrongs don't make a right. This is something that I feel like we kind of learned the hard way, you know, early in our relationship. And a few people on Instagram actually asked me what I meant by this. And basically, by saying two wrongs don't make a right, I mean that there is no point in going tit for tat in relationships. You should not, you know, do something as a response to something that your significant other has done. Yeah, I always use, you know, because ball is life, I always use basketball as an analogy, right? And in marriage and in relationships, your significant other is your teammate. So anybody that knows in sports and in basketball especially, if you're, if you're in a game and you take a bad shot, right? Okay, that's an empty possession. Now, because you take a bad shot, your teammate comes down to take a bad shot. Now, that's two empty possessions. Potentially, you just granted the your opponent to go on a 6-0 run. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all of that correlates. Like, it's the same thing. In life, like, y'all are teammates. Yeah. And I think, you know, two bad shots, two rights, in your case, like you said, two, two wrongs don't make a right. Exactly. And I, I know for us, you know, when we started dating, we were in college. We were young. We were, like, 18 years old. And so we were... We were petty, just to be <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Yeah. We were very petty, and there were numerous occasions where, you know, DJ would do something. And so I would say, oh, okay, like, if he's going to do that, like, I'm going to do this. And, you know, with maturity, we did learn that that just wasn't effective. And once we kind of both, I think, accepted the fact that, like, that was going to get our relationship nowhere real fast is when things started to change for us and we started to be able to have like good conversation and communication and dialogue about the things that were going on in our relationship instead of just like you know responding off of pure emotion without putting any thought into what our actual goals were long term and half of the time a lot of us by nature like we self-centered so we may think it's all about us or it's uh, your partner is making a conscious effort to hurt you when in reality it could be something as simple as, like I said, like a, a misunderstanding. Yeah. Like, oh, why did you why did you leave the toilet seat up? Why did you leave the toilet seat down? Like you were trying to make me fall in. It's like, nah, I, I overslept and I, like, I woke up late. And I was in a rush and just wasn't thinking. Yeah. And, you know, ladies, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful towards men in any way, but I feel like there are a lot of things, even still in our relationship, that I feel like my husband does or doesn't do on purpose. And now, knowing what I know, it's not on purpose. It's just because he does. He literally doesn't even think about it or think to do it or think it's a big deal. And so instead of assuming, you know, that your partner has done or not done something like purposely to hurt you, once you're able to dig down and have those like conversations and not just act, you know, and, and have a, a response based on their behavior, but actually ask, you will probably find out that your man just like doesn't think like you do and really didn't know any better yeah 
So we're about to run into Home Depot. We're gonna grab some things for Harper's birthday party coming up and we will be back with our next two tips. Like, so we can just get play sand for the the fire pit, right? Yeah, man? but like when he said play sand, I thought he was talking about the kinetic sand. <laughs> See, dad life. This is how you know that we have children. Head goes to kinetic sand. So I think I think this will be good. Wow, when you said like play sand, I'm thinking about like sand that you that you play with. Yeah. But this is like okay, I got this it. This will work for our fire pit. Day yeah, 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 I got it. All right, so. We are back. Got all of our materials that we needed for Harper's birthday. That Stay video tuned. is coming soon. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. I cannot wait for you guys to see what we're going to put together. She is going to lose it. Right. So, as you can see, I'm being a passenger prince today. Which now brings us to our second point, which is to love your partner in their love languages as opposed to yours. Me... I'm big on acts of service, um, gifts, nah, I'm just joking, acts of service is my love language, and like, little things like this goes a long way, you know, Allison may just randomly say, oh, babe, like, I know you've been driving all day, like, I'll drive to the grocery store, or I'll go here. And like, early on in our relationship, guys, I think we were both guilty of loving each other in our own personal love language instead of considering that you know you got to love somebody the way that they perceive love and not the way that you would want to perceive like for example early in our relationship I would buy my husband a bunch of gifts and I could not for the life of me understand why like he really didn't seem to care and like his reaction wasn't what I would have hoped and then I learned you know after doing the love language quiz which I highly recommend that everyone do whether you're in a relationship or not I will make sure to put the link to that in the description below um, and just spending time with one another and getting to know each other on a deeper level his love language is not gifts like he you know like if, of course if I buy him something he's like oh thank you he's appreciative but that's not the way that he perceives love now if I surprise him and cook up his favorite dinner or you know if he comes home and I have like kind of like set up an activity for him to do or for us to do together or if I have like cleaned up or now if I let him be a passenger prince. Oh, I, was, I didn't know where that was going. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you I didn't know, know where that was going. <laughs> that is how he perceives love. So it's so important that you love your partner the way that they need to be loved instead of the way that you, you know, want to love them. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but this is something I will never, ever forget because it was the first time anyone has ever done this for me and to me. To you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Look, what are we talking about? Look, here you go. <laughs> hey, do you remember that time you gave me a pedicure? Yes, I do remember that time. We were, what, juniors in college? Yeah. We were juniors in college, and you just... One day, just randomly, was like, yeah, you know, I bought this foot spa, like... I, I pulled out everything. I had yeah. the foot spa, the scrub, the clippers, the the file, I had, like, lotion, like, I pulled out yeah. all the stops. Yeah, and that's something, I don't know why, but that's something that's just been burned in my brain, and that was, that was, I think that was the highest degree you've ever spoken to me in my love language yeah and me on the other hand i feel like i'm probably what do you what do you think my love language is i think probably quality time yours is quality time so like if you plan you know a date or something for us to do or even if you say oh babe like you know let's let's watch a movie together like yeah. or let's sit next to each other we don't even have to like be having conversation but let's just be like close with one another like that yeah. is my love language although i do appreciate a gift every once in a while well yeah yeah we, we we know um even like little things <clears throat> like i remember it's just like the little things if i would be out especially in the summer uh pre-kid pre-kids 
uh, I would just be working out and I would just come home. It's like midday and you would appreciate when I would just go to Publix and just get all of your favorite snacks yeah. and be like, oh, yeah, babe, like, is, is this video or this movie, like, I really wanted to watch or this TV series we should start, like, clear your schedule. Or sometimes I just text you midday, like, hey, listen, we got a couch date. That's what I call it. Yeah, we're a big couch date couple. Yeah, we got a couch date tonight, like, clear your schedule. We going to watch such and such and such and such. Or I may just surprise you and not tell you. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, I heard about that. You know, a lot of people like that show. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, obviously, guys, I feel like everyone, for the most part, is pretty well-versed in love languages. If you don't know um, love languages, we have acts of service, we have quality time, we have um, gifts, and I think there might be another one. I'm pretty sure there are four. But like I said, I will include a link to learn all about love languages and take a quiz for your love language in the description below. Oh, have mercy. See, this is why I don't let you be a, pre a passenger prince. Yeah, you be complaining this, about my driving And this is why I don't want you driving. This is why I can't be a passenger prince. As person. I was saying, though, if you want Man. your relationship to last, it is so important that you find out your love language and your significant other's love language and that you you love that person in their love language instead of your own. You cannot expect for them to necessarily respond to things the way that you did. And we're all different, you know? So love them the way that they want to be loved. Yeah. We are about to pull in to Publix. We have to order the cupcakes and the food for Harper's birthday party. And we'll be back with our final tip. All right, so we fresh back in the car. I went, got my cookies. And we ordered Harper's birthday cupcakes as well as the food for the party. So we are pretty much all set in terms of party plans. Yeah, no, nah, we straight. And I got my cookies. The so. cookies, as you guys can see, were his main priority for the day. But our third tip for the couples that are, you know, just getting together or maybe just trying to better their relationship and want to make your relationship last the test of time. Number three would be to acknowledge that while people do mature, they do not change. And actually, you guys, when I shared this on Instagram, I got a little bit of pushback. There are a lot of people that were like, people definitely change, you know, and I think they kind of misunderstood what I was trying to say, because what I actually was trying to get across is that you cannot change someone and you, you should never enter into a relationship with the expectation that you are going to be able to change someone. My husband and I, as I shared earlier have been together for 15 years and married for nine and yes of course in that time he has grown up but at his very core like he's still the same person that I fell in love with 15 years ago the things that I love about him are still the same and the things that annoy me about him are still the same you know his very deep rooted values beliefs goals they're still the same and had I entered into our relationship thinking that I was going to change those I would have been very disappointed yeah and those that had the pushback on Instagram I mean, you know, everybody is, is so fixated on being literal Larry's. Like, oh, yeah, no, people change all the time. Change and evolution are two totally different things. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We I drank Pinnacle in college. You can't pay me to drink that now. Can't I just pay me. My no. palate has evolved. I've evolved as a person, especially in the area of making better decisions with what I drink. But the point that I'm trying to make is that don't misconstrue change with evolution. From my perspective, I think my life changed when I adopted a flower gardener concept of love. And I know, no, I didn't just pull these out of nowhere just for the sake of the video. It's Harper's last day of Prince Disney Princess Camp. So I wanted to, I always give her flowers at any it's major. It's so sweet, y'all. Yeah, it's so sweet. It's any major like milestone when she has programs at school I always give her flowers it's, it's it's our thing but back on topic 
a flower gardener concept of love is like the concept that God or whoever you pray to, you know, you got to be politically correct. Right. Whoever you pray to has already created this woman to be who she is. Like before she was even born, she was who she was. And so as opposed to trying to change her, I have to adopt a mindset of being a gardener. She's already a rose, right? So the flower gardener concept of love is that I have to nurture her and give her all the tools to be the best rose that she can be. You have to water me. And I got to... <laughs> Wait, I didn't mean for that to sound like that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I didn't forgot what I was going to say. Um, but, yeah, like, it's not my job to change her into a tulip or into a, a sunflower. Like, God already made her a rose. So, it's my job to water her and nurture her the best way I can and the best way I see fit. And I think with that concept, that allows empathy and that allows understanding, you know, not only your partner but yourself and i think that's a, a major tool i agree and honey like you perfectly summed up what i meant when i was saying that you can't change people so thank you for helping me to like get my point across in a way that i think that people can understand so there you have it from the joneses like i said we've been in this thing for a while 15 years together if you are in a new relationship that you want to last three tips number one Two wrongs do not make a right. Mm -hmm. Number two, love your partner in their love language instead of your own. Number three, people don't change and don't expect to be able to change people. You have to kind of accept people for who they are and do what you will with that. So if you guys have any questions about these topics or want to discuss further, we would love to dialogue with you guys either down in the comments below or on social media. So we hope to hear from you. Thanks so much for coming along with us as we ran our errands. And now we are headed back to these kids.